to see his kitchen. <laughs> Joanne Ashton was the interviewer who had the freedom of the castle in Stirling. Stephen Hendry then, 3-1. He's just backstage at the moment. Their little interval, and we're coming out again in just a second to play Andy Hicks. As I say, five more to play. They are the best of 19, these first rounders. Stephen Hendry, while very short odds indeed, William Hill's never very generous indeed. Even this early stage, he's 11 to 10 on to win the whole title. This is to win the title. Those we've coloured up there are the people playing here today. Peter Ebton, in fact, uh, is playing. He plays this afternoon against uh, one of the debut makers, Stefan Masrosis. They've got Ebton at 13 to 2, his third favourite. Mark Williams, the Welshman, the Welsh potter at 14 to 1, and he plays Terry Griffiths this afternoon. Griffiths, a 250 to 1 outsider, the 1979 champion, who says, if I started here in the Crucible, I'm going to finish here in the Crucible. He qualified, he's through, and he plays fellow Welshman Mark Williams this afternoon. And Ken Doherty at 25s. Uh, Ken plays Mark Davis tonight, 25 to 1 there. Nigel Bond, who became a dad for the second time a couple of days ago at 33s, doesn't come in until tomorrow. Tony Drago at 66s, and there's a lot more after that, as I say, down to 300 to 1. And that's another qualifier, Graham. Horn. So that's all the details of what's uh, starting off this 21st Championship of the Crucible. Now the live action with the champion. The first time I was just recalling A great performance by a very cool and calculated snooker star. His first time ever in the World Championships. 18 years on, he was back to the qualifying circus in Telford. And he certainly had the crowd behind him as Terry went out to beat 20-year-old Alfie Burton, winning 10 frames to four. Most venues were the same in the qualifying sections. He was just got a table like in a cubicle type of thing. And uh, it creates a good atmosphere in the room because you can hear the noise from the other tables. I mean, the crucible is very similar. I was very pleased the way I played as well, which is a bonus for me because I haven't been playing a lot. So um, the last time I qualified, of course, was in '79, and uh, I went on to win the championships. But uh, it's a bit ambitious to talk about that this year. I think uh, I think the opposition's a bit hot in, in the Crucible, but uh, really pleased to get through. To be honest, I haven't played at all. You know, my last competitive game was in the Crucible. Uh, which is 11 months ago now in the World Championships, apart from the seniors pot black which I played in. And uh, on top of that, I haven't practiced with anybody at all since the Crucible. I had I've done all my practice solo, so I haven't had any match practice. But obviously, um, technically, I'm pretty sound anyway. Uh, in my position as director of coaching, that helps because I coach everybody else and I learn a lot from them. So my cue actions are still very good. Uh, my nerves perhaps are not quite what they used to be, but uh, to be honest, you know, at this time of year, by now, I'm absolutely cheesed off, you know, we're going into the World Championships, which I look forward to, but this time of the season when I was competing full time, uh, I just about had enough of playing five, six hours every day and practicing, but now I'm very fresh, I didn't feel any pressure today out there when I was playing. Um, and I hope yeah, I'll feel the same when I get to the Crucible because the other players obviously are playing full time and, and I'm just a part time player now so I'm just there to enjoy myself and hopefully uh, ruffle a few feathers. Uh, there are Terry Griffiths, me and John Virgo here. Yeah. Real old stagers morning John. Well I can't get anyone to practice with him eh? <laughs> <laughs> he must have slowed down. It is remarkable though that he's got back here having to get through from Telford. Good to see him here. Yeah well there's a lot of good young players about and uh, Terry probably on the point there, he is fresh and he hasn't been playing that much and uh, just that enthusiasm is, is what you need sometimes to carry you through. Might need a bit to beat Mark Williams though. He'll need a lot of that, but so will Mark Williams, I mean, he, you know, we, we know that Terry's not going to lie down, yeah, yeah. you know. And he said he's going to quicken up. Yeah, well I believe that one. <laughs> <laughs> John, of course, will be here with me throughout the 17 days. As I say, Grandstand continues coverage of the snooker, just getting underway now on BBC One. We're back here at 4.40 on BBC Two, and an extra programme tonight. It's not any newspapers, we've got an extra programme. BBC One, late tonight with all the highlights of this opening day of 21. Challenge. Uh, he was up against his Welsh compatriot, Mark Williams, seeded 16, making his Crucible debut, but with uh, some form having beaten Steve. Well, Griffiths took the first frame in his usual studied fashion. Uh, into the second with Williams to break, and our commentators are John Spencer and Dennis Taylor.
One. <laughs> yes, and I feel this is just what Mark needed. Six. We can knock a 30 or 40 break together just to get that confidence Seven. going, get rid of those nerves that the Crucible always puts on players when they come here for the first time. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Now he's got the perfect angle. If this works out, he could bring quite a few reds into play. Oh, that's <laughs> spot on. Thirty-one. Yes, and the bottom red of the pack goes, and the black's available in the right corner. Thirty-two. And I think this has just come at the right time, right time for Mark. We're feeling much better now. 47. 48. Yeah, still under the three minute uh, mark and he's already on a 50 plus break when this black goes in. So he certainly doesn't hang about. Although... 55. He's been a bit unfortunate there, so he may not clinch the frame with this visit. In fact, there's no pot on. Williams, 55. <laughs> Mark's first 50-plus break at the Crucible Theatre. I'm sure there's going to be many more of those in the years to come. Terry just looking, I think, at the red directly below the pink. See if we can hit enough of it to pot it.
Well, there was no easy straightforward path back down the table for Mark Williams. That's why he attempted to screw the white down to the vault cushion, but a long way short. One. And this now, an excellent <coughs> opportunity for Terry Griffiths to fight his way back into this second frame. Okay, there's a few reds tied up on the left side cushion, but the other three are ideally placed. Six. Seven. In fact, those two reds uh, are available. 22. Yes, I'm just wondering if he'll take this outside red this time, because if the one near the pink would be awkward queuing. Just a wee bit short with this positional shot there. Twenty-nine. Getting uh, much more difficult now, but at least he's in with uh, with a chance. A few minutes ago, it looked as if this frame was uh, well and truly over. Not got on the red, 36. but super shot. I mean, he hit that so clean. He's queuing very well, is Terry. And Terry there is able to play with more or less a conventional pair of spectacles. Uh, the reason for that is he, he doesn't tilt his head forward as a lot of players do. More square on the shot. Terry Griffiths, 36. That's an excellent shot from Mark Williams. <laughs> 
Yes, yeah, certainly a tough safety shot. I think Terry's trying to hit the red thin on the left side to come off the side cushion, the back cushion, and down toward the bulk end, but certainly not the easiest of shots. Well, he's obviously not taking that. Oh, and he's judged that to perfection. Brown ball's nicely positioned there to try and get behind. Well, he's not got behind the brown, but he's still got Mark in some trouble. I think he's going to have to have a go at this. Uh, perfectly played by Terry. He can pot the blue and come off the top cushion and he could get himself in behind that red and leave it on. He's a bit too close to it, I feel. Well, it's, it's still on for the corner. It'll pass blue and yellow. What an important shot this could prove to be. He was 55 nil behind. It's there. Seven. Yes, he just didn't seem to be comfortable Teddy on the shot there. 12. But it's not a bad result. Hasn't left anything. Yes, he could be tucked up behind the green and brown, however. Four. Three ball. Well, on the free ball, so Mark can take the pink as a, an additional yellow. Not got nicely on the yellow, but I'm sure he'll have a nice snooker behind Two. the pink now. Mark Williams, two. <clears throat> Five. 
foul and a miss. Mark Williams, four. Three ball. Yes, and that's another free ball, but this time I think Mark will have the white foot back. Mark can get through to the yellow. A little smile from Terry. He was pleased with that. see enough of the yellow to have a go at the pot but will he take it on As we mentioned before, 55 points to nil behind. He's fought his way back into the frame. He's now looking favourite. And if he was to go on and clinch the second frame, that would certainly give Mark Williams something to think about. Thank you. Yes, and the way he's been playing, you've got to fancy him to do it. In fact, couldn't be better. Just drop the blue in. Try and get straight on the pink into the right corner and hold it there for the black. Forty. Twenty. Well, I think the red is available into the left corner. He's very close to it with the cue ball, so he's got to be careful not to, to push this. And that was the reason he raised the butt of the cue in the air. Push shot is when <laughs> the tip of the cue is in contact with the, the cue ball and the object ball all at the same time. Five. Touching ball. <coughs> you heard 
our referee John Williams declare a touching ball so Terry mustn't move that red otherwise that would be a foul shot Terry may be forced to taking this pot on into the right corner. Not sure what's going to happen to the cue ball. No, it's the safety shot. And probably the correct choice there. And again, another <coughs> bad shot from Mark. That white should have been within two or three inches of that bolt cushion. And a good long pot here from Terry. And he's in business. And I must admit, Terry Griffiths has been much more fluent in this match than he has been for quite some time. And when I say fluent, I mean, he's certainly not hanging around, moving around the table very quickly. 25. A lot of people thought that uh, Mark Williams was going to walk all over this gentleman at the table, but he's proved them all wrong. <coughs> Hasn't had any big breaks in the five frames previously played. 33. A 36 break in the second frame helped him to win that. Yes, and I think this one is going to be big enough to win the frame. Already 64 points in front. 40. Terry Griffiths, 52, on the frame. Well, Mark Williams has conceded. That was enough 
for Terry Griffiths to take the frame. He extends his lead to a four frames to two. And what a, an excellent performance from Terry Griffiths. I think the important frame in this match was the second frame when his opponent made a 55 break and Terry uh, managed to claw his way back into it and pinched that second frame. Mark then went on to make a break of 66 and then a break of 62, but uh, he hasn't seemed relaxed out there, John, and uh, he's finding it fairly difficult. Yes, I am. The major upset of 1997. Deserving all that applause. And, uh, well, this is a frame that the favourite Peter Abden should have won. Stefan Masrosis, ranked 81 in the world, ends the first session 6-2 up on world number three and last year's finest Peter Ebden. Masrosis needs four. Just went for all the shots and, you know, most of them went in, so, you know, I'm very pleased. Before that, Terry Griffiths, champion of 79, now up against the new top Welshman, provisionally world number three, Mark Williams, who leads 5-4. Five, 5-4, four. Five, four, I mean, I would have taken that before I started because I am not any match play, so 5-4 is not too bad for me. I'd prefer to be in front of us. Yes, yeah, very good afternoon. Welcome here on this Sunday afternoon. It should be a very interesting Sunday afternoon. And we're with you all the way through until, uh, what is it, 10 to 5. Apart from the two matches I've just been mentioning there, you've been having a look at what's been happening so far, Ronnie O'Sullivan comes into the arena here tonight, and we shall be with him in our evening programme. And that starts at the nice early time of 9 o'clock. So, a lot to come. Let's take a look at the full lineup of the Embassy World Championship. Stephen Hendry, the champion, going for seven titles. Already through into the next round, a winner yesterday over Andy Hicks. Now waits to see whether he'll play Mark Williams or Terry Griffiths. The match we've just been looking at, 5-4, and the match we're going to see to a finish in just a moment. Darren Morgan starts out today against Gary Wilkinson. Ronnie O'Sullivan, as I mentioned, is in tonight against Mick Price. And it's the half of the draw. We're still waiting to start. Nigel Bond, James Watanard, Jimmy White, and John Parrott. This is other part of the draw, there's Peter Ebden, last year's beaten finalist, world number three, as I was saying, 2-6 down to Stefan Masrosis, and we'll be seeing that as well to a finish. Dave Harold resumes <coughs> excuse me, to a finish. He's 4-5 down to Lee Walker. That's the qualifier who, to qualify, knocked out two former world champions, Joe Johnson and Dennis Taylor. Ken Doherty, that's a hard struggle for Ken at the moment. 5-4 only against Mark Davis, who knocked Ken out a couple of years ago. And still to start, Steve Davis, Tony Drago, and John Higgins. Well, all of that, as I say, to come. And let's first of all get off with the, the Williams um, Griffiths match. As I said, it was a tight struggle all the way through. I feel great, really. You know, I sort of, I think I, I had such a reception when I walked in, when I was introduced. I mean, that was a bit overwhelming, but um, I managed to win a few frames before the interval. But uh, I got a bit tired after the interval. My eyes were my burning, you know, and I was lucky to win any after the interval, I suppose, because Mark didn't play great. Really, I don't think I should be in the lead going into tomorrow's match, but. I managed to win the last three, which I dug deep and won the last three, and uh, I'm pleased to be in front. Well, 5-4, he was in front as they started today for the final session, and he stayed in front by that one frame at their first interval. Williams leading Griffiths seven frames to six. And then the old champion, he got on a bit of a roll. He took three in a row before Williams stopped the rot to uh, just be one behind now at eight frames to nine. Griffiths leading 9-8. Here's the next, frame 18. It's Williams to break. Remember, the first to ten, Griffiths, the old champion, in his swan song here at the Crucible, leading nine frames to eight. And commentary will come from John Spencer and Clive Everton with John Williams, your referee.
Six. Seven. Twelve. Thirty. Well, if he wants to go into the pack here, he's got a big target. Where's the white going? Well, he certainly deserved 18. a better outcome than this. Shot from there. Mark Williams, 24. Yes, Mark got down about three times before he played that shot. And I always used to say, if you're not confident enough to take it the first time you get down, ignore it. Seventeen. Early days, but this is a potential match clinching chance. Twenty four. Yes, Terry just not got the perfect angle to go down for the black off that red. But there is one in the centre. <laughs> He could take. Yes, at first glance, I thought that he could force through for black off a second red, but maybe it's not the right angle. <coughs> Twenty-five. Blue's all right, though. And uh, there are now five 
well opened reds. Yes, and that's one thing for sure. Terry can't say he didn't have a chance of winning the match because this is a match winning chance. I'm sure he didn't expect to get position on that red. 31. By means of a full ball kiss, but he won't be bothered about that. Two of these three reds 52. would be sufficient for Terry. And what a remarkable victory it would be. Hardly picked his queue up for six months. <coughs> this is the only tournament he's played in this season, apart from a couple of frames in seniors pot black. Griffiths, 52. Near the finishing line, but not quite over it. Wayward effort from Williams, who has uh, cracked somewhat under the pressure. Yes, and not much choice for Turia. I feel he has to take this red on, but it's a tough one. Be tension, anxiety, trying too hard. This frame, indeed, this match could still go either way, though. Good shot to get the cue ball back to the ball cushion from there. But by the same token, the one thing Mark didn't want to do was knock the red against the cushion and the pink against the cushion. 
28 points behind. Give this four. Unlucky to go in off. Williams has had a few of those. <clears throat> yes, playing this with right hand side to try and take the white down behind the brown and blue. Well, I think that's a terrible shot Mark's played. He's not looked at these two reds. I'm sure they're a plant. And if they're not, they can certainly be made into one. got in surely it would have been a frame and match a couple of shots later one Williams still in it though the crowd applauding that and that was a good shot. Forty. Quite a bit of work to do however Mark to win this frame at this visit. Seventy. Certainly brown to blue and blue to pink is going to be very difficult. Ninety. Twenty-two. <coughs> Twenty-six. This is the shot. I'll have to play this with a lot of top and right on side to spin the white round the green pocket. Now, oh, is he hard enough? 31. Hard enough, but slightly wrong direction. from Williams at such a juncture.
and a good shot to finish that contribution. <laughs> Williams needs pink and black. Six. This for nine all. And it's not easy. Six. Six. Thirteen in the frame. Mark Williams was two down with three to play. But he has won two of those frames to level at nine all and leaving everything depending on a 19th frame decider. I don't know those are the sort of shots you should be playing in the final frame. Fortunately for Mark, of course, the pink and black are tied up. This is a chance for Terry if he wishes to go into the pike. Doesn't look too Ten. bad. I think the red just above the black and to the right of the black will go. <coughs> Jerry Griffiths, ten. An easy ball to miss. Yes, Williams certain to get Griffiths in a modicum of trouble with that simple safety. A much better shot option than risking another long red. Because of the kick, the cube really didn't finish as near the cushion as intended.
One. Well, that was a brave Five. shot from Mark and another couple of inches would have been perfect. Mark Williams, Doesn't want to be cutting red over the right corner with this safety. <coughs> Chose another red involving a thicker contact. Williams just managing to get through to that one and perfectly situated on the blue. Six. Mark Williams, six. Played safe off that red. Had to move it. <coughs> yes, and I think we're going to see some battle here now. Nine apiece. 11 points to 10. And blue down the bulk end of the table, pink against the side cushion, and black tied up. So a lot of snooker in this frame. Yes, choice of a couple of reds for Terry, but the colour's the problem. that much better but it's run very awkward these are probably the most difficult shots on the table cutbacks into blind pocket <laughs> now does the pink go on the black spot no seven <laughs> Eight. 
Eight. Fifteen. And this time left an angle on the pink to come for the red on the left hand side of the table. Twenty one. Twenty two. Yes, the angle he's left on the pink now, though, means that he can't bring the cue ball towards his next red. Five hours for 18 completed frames. Certainly not one of the marathons for which uh, Terry Griffiths has been so noted. <coughs> he kept me here till nine minutes to four once in 1983. Yes, and Terry keeps looking at this pink to see how he can get on the next red, but I don't know, he might not even take the pink on. prepared to risk the yellow 31 and he was unlucky not to get the benefit of it a kiss on the green sport certain position on the two reds just above the black spot 31. To lead by 30 in the deciding frame. Yes, and Terry can get through to this red. So one good pot here. Terry would certainly be in with a, a great chance. He can force this in and go down to the bulk end of the table. Concentrated uh, on safety, <coughs> I think. Made sure he avoided contact on the second red.
foul. Mark Williams, four. And also giving Williams a shot at this long red. Playing from the ball line. Williams would normally knock those in, but in the heat of this tight finish, <coughs> his long potting is not up to its usual standard. the blue there I think but still nicely on the green the perfect angle to come down for the two reds near the black spot Terry Griffiths, four. Was he starting to think about the winning post? Yes, I think that's what's happened with Terry. For a frame or two now. However, the three reds near the side cushion are all in his favour. And he has a chant of the red into the right centre. but no chance, I don't think, of getting on a, a red, so I would certainly be putting a colour safe. Oh. <laughs> oh, having said that, that's a great shot he's done with. Didn't, certainly didn't look to have the angle to get down for that red. Very positive choice of shot. Indeed, most of his shot choices have been more so than when he was in his prime, I would say. Just the black and one red required. And this 14. red does go into this corner pocket. Not taking it. Cherry Kivitz, 14. which leaves Williams hanging over the very precipice.
this could be it. 44 points the difference, so just the one red to leave Mark needing snookers. Isn't it difficult to get over the line sometimes? Decision time for Terry. Could have a cut at this red at <coughs> the left corner. <coughs> we'll take the white round the angles. Looks as though he may be having a cut at it. Concentrated on safety and made it a good one. That was an attempt at what was effectively match ball, albeit with a modicum of safety in mind. Great shot. Yes, and what a difference that shot could make. Not only got the snooker, of course, but brought another red out into play. Just the one near the side cushion now. Overcut the attempted pot, but not a bad second prize. <coughs> yes, and of course the one thing Terry doesn't want to do is to bring that red away from the side cushion. Thin contact on the way up was the idea, but it was very difficult. And he's now developed that red to an easily potable position. One. It'll take some nerve, though, for Williams to make a winning clearance.
8. Nine. Yes, finished it a little too straight on that red, so needs a good shot now on the blue. Fourteen. Well. Who could have predicted that Mark the Williams, 40. red would come back off the middle pocket mm. jaw? It's still a difficult pot for Griffiths, though. Yes, just want the one red, of course, to leave Mark needing snookers. So you don't know yet whether Mark's been lucky or unlucky with that. Needs a good pot from Terry. So coming back off the middle bump like it did, might have turned out to be lucky for Mark. One. Second chance for a winning clearance. <coughs> but a lot of tension. Cannon the yellow as intended. Six. Meant to leave it straighter. Good pot. Just over on the position. Mark Williams eight. This looks good, however. The double kiss, <coughs> unintended. <coughs> yes, green will go into the left centre, but could be finishing near that right hand cushion with the white. Well, he decided to go all around the table. Three. Just over hit it. Good shot at this stage from so near the side cushion. Blue, pink, black still needed. Yes, and this will be some clearance. Had a couple of great shots there. Well, I think he's got a bit of a kick there. He's still on the pink, but. Well, I just don't see how he's going to get on the black from there. Oh. <laughs> and you could hear Mark sigh there.
Yes, you won't see many better shots than that. Tremendous amount of top and left on side. And Mark Williams pulls it off after all. This new torch bearer for Welsh snooker has come from two down with three to play to beat one of the great old masters, Terry Griffiths, by ten frames to nine. A deserved standing ovation for both players, certainly, but that's what it means. Mark Williams is through. What a match against Terry Griffiths at 10-9. And look what happens next. Mark Williams will play Stephen Hendry, the champion, in the first of the second round, as that doesn't start until Friday. It's just the half of the draw where we've got Darren Morgan against Gary Wilkinson today, Ronnie O'Sullivan tonight against Mick Price, all the rest waiting to start. But certainly the men of the moment here on this Sunday, these two, Mark Williams and Terry Griffiths. Mark, congratulations. That was hard. Yeah, I always knew it was going to be a tough match, but uh, not that tough. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, as the director of coaching, <laughs> and you've now had your swan song at the cruise, what have you learned from that experience? Um, uh, what I've learned is that, that um, you've never won a match. I was very close to winning that match. It was 9-7 and like 40 odd up in the last, and he did one red and he had two pokes in it, but didn't get it. But uh, I really enjoyed the match. And to be fair, David, uh, Mark he was under a lot of pressure because he had like everything to lose and nothing to gain when mm. in my position I was a m a much more mm. relaxed you know and I was going for more shots and believe it or not I even played a bit quicker well I was I? saying you'd yeah. actually quickened up well John Verbo said he'll, he'll, uh, he'll have to wait to see that but I did play a bit quicker because uh, I didn't want to get bogged down I, I am been practicing a lot and to be honest you can't keep Mark safe mm. anyway you just pot so well but uh, I thought he'd done great the last three frames you've done a lot of pressure and I played all right the last two games I was quite pleased the way I played he just played a little bit better but the pinky potted mm. you know after yeah. having a kick in the blue deserved yeah. to win the match yeah. because if that doesn't win the shot of the championships well be, it's a great shot you know any yeah. snooker player will tell you after a kick with a winning position the pinky was left was an awful shot and he <coughs> played with a lot of left hand side and he just told me, now we're watching it here, that, that he just went down and hit it and hope it went in. But it was a great shot and uh, yeah. he just pots too many for me, I'm afraid. Here it is. Look at this. Look at it. you pleased with this one, Mark, I can see, with the reaction afterwards. Because you'd had the kick on the blue, hadn't you? Yeah, I mean, it's, it was straightforward. Just rolled it in to get on the pink in the middle. And I've had a kick and I just come off and I just thought, oh, I'll just go for it full blooded and just There's a bit it. of biting of the lips there for this black, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> well, some, you've done it, yeah. I've beaten the old chap. <laughs> it, it was hard, a lot of people said uh, before, and I don't think you'll agree with this, you thought it wasn't going to be too difficult, but that's wrong, isn't it? No, I mean, well, people can say, well, they won, but uh, <coughs> I, knew, I knew I was expecting a tough match, mm. and that's what I got, but I didn't expect to end on the black mine, but uh, oh, I mean, he's, he's still a top-class player, and. Uh, I'm glad I'm going to meet him again. <laughs> it is remarkable. Provisionally, <laughs> I'm going to meet him again. You're provisionally number three in the world, but I mean, a brand new experience for you coming into the Crucible. You've never played here before. No, I'm, I've never qualified you. And uh, it's, a, it's a nice venue and it's, it's hard for your first time. But I'm just looking forward now to my next match. I mean, you couldn't have had, really, I mean, a more nerve wracking debut to play here for the first time. People expecting so much of you. You've risen up the rankings like mad, and you had to take on this chap here. I mean, you couldn't have had a worse draw, really, could you? Um, no, not really. I mean, I enjoyed the match all the way through. Yeah. He's played a lot quicker than he normally does. Yeah. And uh, that made it even more enjoyable yeah. for me. And, uh, well, now, what are you going to do until next Friday? Because you've got a nice long time to think about uh, taking on Stephen Hendry. Yeah, I'm just going to go home now for a few days, practice in the club, and mm. uh, come and get him. Mm. <laughs> come and get him. Well, a good. I mean, you did get him a couple of weeks ago down in Plymouth. I mean, that 9-2 win over him in the British Open in the final. Um, do you think you've upset him now? He's really after you. Um, no, I, d I don't think that'll take. Uh, that'll be on his mind when he plays yeah. me again. A bit beyond yours. But that'll be on mine. <laughs> yeah, <it will> be. <laughs> anyway, to both of you. Be on mine. The winner, the man who goes through the swan song, Terry, marvellous service. Thank, Thank you both you. very much. Lovely. And everything else. So they are in the top half of the draw. Let's take a look at what's happening now in the other half of the draw, and that's the match World Championship. Alan Hughes is about to introduce the players to a packed house. 
Ladies and gentlemen, now into the arena comes a talented and colourful young player making his second appearance here who is capable of beating the best. Ladies and gentlemen, will you welcome please from Leicester, Stefan Masrose. <laughs> And now comes his opponent, one of the leading fancies for the title and the reigning Regal Masters and Thailand Open champion into the arena. We welcome back last year's world finalist, Peter Ebden. <laughs> Alan Chamberlain there, the referee. That's the Leicester crowd. You might have a job keeping them quiet this afternoon. Alan, ladies and gentlemen, before we start, please remember there is another match taking place at the same time. Let's be fair to all four players. No more shouting out. Thank you. Uh, I thought he'd have to do that even before it started, but they're all worked up because Stefan, their man, the has break. played some superb stuff. Stefan Masros is to break. There's the handcuff. What well, on the table? One of Stefan's strengths is his great potting ability. He pots so well, but uh, <coughs> this one, perhaps the most important one for a while for him. So they are in the top half of the draw. Let's take a look at what's happening now in the other half of the draw, and that's the match world championship. Alan Hughes is about to introduce the players to a packed house. Ladies and gentlemen, now into the arena comes a talented and colourful young player making his second appearance here who is capable of beating the best. Ladies and gentlemen, will you welcome please from Leicester, Stefan Masrose. <laughs> And now comes his opponent, one of the leading fancies for the title and the reigning Regal Masters and Thailand Open champion into the arena. We welcome back last year's world...